everyone. What we have seen so far is a constructive deliberation on mitigation of climate change. I feel extremely elated to know that now every country acknowledges that climate is changing and is posing a great threat to our sustainability. It is my strong hope that these discussions will provide us additional guidance in tackling the challenges of climate crisis, biodiversity loss and pollution to mobilize urgently needed actions across 2030 agenda for sustainable development. Delegates may have noted that I said additional guidance because we all know that we were warned long ago about the climate crisis but we have been slow in taking the countervailing actions. The climate is now a massive challenge and we should not leave any stones undone to save our planet. Now, I invite the member countries to express their opinions. Distinguished delegates, honorable chairperson, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to address this esteemed assembly on behalf of United States of America. We gather here today at a critical juncture in our shared global effort to confront the climate crisis. Climate change poses an existential threat to our planet, our economics and our way of life. The impacts are already being felt around the world, from more fre frequent and severe weather events to raising sea levels and changing ecosystems. The United States recognizes its unique responsibility and opportunity in this global challenge. As one of the largest economics and a significant emitter of greenhouse gases, we are committed to taking bold actions to reduce the carbon footprint and lead by example. Our goal is clear, to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. <coughs> the two most populous countries, India and China, which together have one third of global population, have the highest responsibility in mitigating the global warming. Because a slight increase in the per capita carbon emission contributes to six times to that of USA. To this end, we have rejoined the Paris Agreement and have set ambitious targets to reduce our emissions by 50 to 52 percent by 2030. We are accelerating our transition to clean energy, investing in, in, investing in renewable energy sources such as wind and solar, and enhancing our energy efficiency standards. We are also prioritizing the development of innovative technologies such as carbon capture and storage to mitigate the emissions from the industrial sector. However, we understand the national efforts are not alone sufficient. Climate change is a global challenge that requires global solutions. The United States is committed to working with all the nations to strengthen international cooperation and enhance the implementation of the Paris Agreement. We, act, we are actively participating in the negotiations to finalize the rulebook of the agreement, which will ensure transparency, accountability in tracking progress towards our climate goals. We are also dedicated to supporting developing countries in their efforts to combat climate changes and build resilience to their impacts. Through our contributions to the Green Climate Fund and other in international in initiatives, we are providing financial and technical assistance to help nations transition to sustainable energy. Furthermore, we are recognizing the importance of involving all the sectors of the society. The private sector, civil society and the local governments play a crucial role in the driving innovation. We encourage partnerships across the sectors and borders to amplify our collective impact. Distinguished colleagues, the window for action is rapidly closing. The decision we make today will determine the future of our planet. But let us seize this movement with the urgency it demands, guided by the science, equity and shared commitment to safeguarding our common home. The United States stands ready to lead, to collaborate and to act. Together we can rise to meet this defining challenge of our time and build a more sustainable, resilient, equitable world for all. Thank you. United Nations Secretary General, Your Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, Much has changed since United Nations was established many years ago. Australia was there at the beginning and we are here because we continue to believe the differences can be resolved through dialogue and mutual respect. And we believe in an international rule-based order is essential for global stability, security and prosperity. On behalf of all Australia, I would like to take an opportunity to speak about Australia 
response to great environmental challenges and real action taken by us by, for the climatic change. Protecting our oceans is one of the great environmental challenge. To protect our oceans, Australia is committed by leading an urgent action to combat the plastic waste and we have recently banned exports of waste plastic types glass. We are leading on practical research and development into recycling, turning the recycled plastics and roads into road <laughs> manufacturing and 100% recycled PT bottles and we are capturing methane gas and waste to create new technologies. Not only protecting our oceans, but we are also investing in research and development by science and business expertise to create renewable technologies. Australia has highest per capita in clean energy technologies of anywhere in the world. In Australia, one in five households has rooftop solar systems. Australia also contributed in climate funds like Green Climate Fund and Global Environmental Fund. Australia has set up international partnerships for blue carbon in 2015 with the aim of protecting and serving the mangrove, tidal marshes and sea grasses for climatic change, mitigation, adaptation and a great barrier reef which remains as the world's prestigious areas of natural beauty. As Australia is a resource rich country, we are contributing only, only 5% of world coal production and we are responsible for 1.3% of the global emissions. <coughs> From then, we have met the coiter targets and we will exceed our coiter targets and we will accelerate our efforts to decrease less than 60% CFCs as in terms of Montreal Protocol. In conclusion, addressing the climatic change, it requires the collaborative action and urgent commitment from all the nations to decrease the greenhouse gas emissions and enhance the global resilience to mitigate and escalate impacts of the climatic change. So, we have to safeguard our planet for current and future generations. Thank you. The General of the Assembly, distinguished delegates and excellence. I am honored to address the UN General Assembly today on behalf of New Zealand government. I wish to express our commitment to global climatic change. I want to focus on global climatic change which we believe is crucial to achieve sustainable development and global peace. New Zealand, which is a developed country with GDP per capita US dollars 43,000 and population with nearly 5 million which is 0.06% of world's population. New Zealand has been actively engaged in global efforts to address climatic changes and has committed to reduce its greenhouse gases emissions to net zero by 2050. Our country is known for its natural beauty and biodiversity. There is a strong focus on environmental sustainability and conservation on our country. Efforts are made to protect and preserve its natural resources, including initiative to combat climatic change and promote renewable energy. The Paris Agreement 2016 has increased New Zealand to take proactive steps in decreasing its agricultural emissions and promoting sustainable agricultural practices aligning with the country's commitment to addressing climatic changes. Climatic change has a significant impact on New Zealand and its people are facing a range of problems which includes mental health disturbances, impact on Maori communities, loss of biodiversity, coastal erosion and flooding. Our country is vulnerable to sea level rise, especially in coastal areas and low-lying areas. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climatic Change, global sea levels are projecting to rise by 1.1 meter by 2100. The impacts may include coastal erosion and flooding, salt water intrusion into freshwater source, loss of coastal land and habitat. Our carbon equivalence is 0.09% of the total world. And we are very proud to say that it fell by 4% between 2021 to 2022. New Zealand is taking some proactive steps to reduce its carbon footprint and contribute to global efforts to combat climatic changes which include emission trading scheme, an initiative to reduce greenhouse gases emissions by increasing various sectors of economy to reduce their emissions. Climatic change response zero amendment bill aims to decrease net carbon emissions to zero by 2050. We aim to plant 1 million trees by 2028 to offset carbon emissions. Green building standards 
basis of coal fired boilers, emission price policy, carbon neutrality by 2025, introducing electrical vehicles. We are committing to spend US dollars 1.3 billion in climatic finance for 2022 to 25, representing 0.21% of our GDP in 2022. This funding is intended to support other countries' efforts to decrease greenhouse gases emissions and adapt to the impact of climatic change. The climatic crisis is a ticking alarm. And we must now act to catastrophic consequences. Newsnet urges all the nations to increase their ambition and take immediate action. We put forth our efforts to support all the other countries to achieve global climate achievements. My delegation calls upon the international community to work together and reduce carbon emission and transition to renewable energy sources. We look forward to work with all the members to achieve sustainable future. Let us unite in our pursuit of peace and prosperity. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Distinguished delegates, esteemed colleagues and honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is both a privilege and a responsibility to stand before you today as a representative of the United Kingdom in this bigger global gathering.
145 million people as of latest estimates. Russia has undergone significant development over the years, evolving from a feudal society to a global superpower. Today, Russia remains as a major player in global politics with a well-developed industrial base and a rich cultural heritage. Russia is rich in its energy resources and has the largest known natural gas reserves on Earth, along with second largest coal resource and eighth largest oil resource. Our country has been experiencing noticeable climate changes in recent years. One significant impact is warming of the Arctic region leading to the melting of permafrost and ice cover, which can lead to damage to infrastructure, changes in landscapes, release of greenhouse gases. We experienced our third hottest year on record in the 2021. In addition to this, our country has been witnessing more frequent weather events like floods, wildfires and glacial rocks. The melting of glaciers in Russia contributes to rising sea levels globally which impacts the coastal areas and ecosystems. Our country is facing multiple threats from climate change across sectors like agriculture, fisheries, infrastructure, tourism and more. The cost to the economy could be massive. Without urgent action, Russia stands to lose its 3.08% of GDP by 2050, that rises to 8.93% by 2100. In order to prevent these damages to some extent, in June 2021, Russia adopted its heavily watered down climate bill. Unlike the original iteration of the legislation, does not impose emissions, quotas, nor impose penalties on large greenhouse gas emitters. Spending on environmental protection by enterprises in Russia reached approximately 880 billion Russian rubles in 2022, which is 9% more than the previous year. We have taken several steps in line with UN climate goals. Our country has committed to reduce its greenhouse gases emission and increase its use of renewable energy resources. Russia has also been involved in international agreements like Paris Agreement, which aims to limit global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius. We released transport strategy until 2030 to reduce transport emissions by 1.2% relative to the total emission. Since our country is the fourth largest contributor of carbon dioxide emissions in the world, emitting 1652 million metric tons in 2022, for which we have set targets to become carbon neutral by 2016 and limit greenhouse gas emissions to 70% of total 1990 levels by 2030. In conclusion, through its involvement in UN Parliament, Russia aims to contribute to shaping global climate policies, promoting environmental sustainability and fostering collaborations among nations to address the challenges posed by climate changes on global scale. Thank you. Respected Honorable Secretary General, esteemed guests and delegates, it's an immense pleasure to stand before you on behalf of People's Republic of China. China, officially the People's Republic of China is a country in East Asia with a population exceeding 1.4 billion. It is the world's second most populous country after India representing 17.4% of world population. Our country is one of the oldest civilizations but when the Western world inflicted a century of humiliation from which we recovered only in the recent decades. By the time we are self reliant in terms of food, industrialization and defense, a new challenge has emerged in terms of global warming. Most of the Western countries have developed well before this alarm rang and have taken advantage of the rest of the world to slow down their activities. While we agree with the problems associated with global warming, we are committed to continue our activity with proper measures to reduce carbon emissions. We want to assertively say that our country is a pioneer in solar panel production and export which reduces carbon emissions across the globe. Our infrastructure, be it be waterways, roads, bridges are aimed at reducing carbon emissions only. So our bell of process of logistics, unfortunately our neighboring is suspecting our intention in this international project and western powers are supporting our neighbors against interest of PRC as well as the countries through which this bell and road passes. 
China, world's largest economy, second largest economy, accounting for world 18% is of global GDP. The major drives of China economy include manufacturing. China, world's largest manufacturing hub, producing goods such as electronics, textile, and machinery. Exports. China is the world's largest exports with exports accounting of around 20% of its GDP. Infrastructure and development. China has, has invested heavily in infrastructure including roads, railways, airports and seaports. Technology. China is a leader in technology with companies like Huawei, Alibaba and Tencent during in innovation. Consumer market. China has vast and growing consumer market with a middle class of over 400 million people. Agriculture. China is a major agriculture producer accounting for around 10% of, of global production. Energy production. China is a major producer of energy including coal, oil and renewable energy resources. Service sector. China's service sector including finance, logistics and tourism is growing rapidly. Government investment. The Chinese government plays a significant role in economy, investing in key sectors and driving the growth. Apart from this, China has taken certain pollution measures to reduce the global warming, which includes reduce the particulate matter 2.5 levels. China has reduced the particulate matter 2.5 levels by 50% since 2013 with as average annual concentration falling to 29 micrograms per cubic meter in 2022. Increasing the good quality air days. The number of days with good quality air has reached 316 days in 2022 in China compared to world most populated city in North America. Pledging Carbon Neutrality China has pledged to achieve carbon neutrality by 2060 peak carbon dioxide emissions before 2030 and increase the share of renewable energy sources in its energy mix. Implementing emissions and reducing schemes China is working to launch a national emission trading scheme which would force polluters to pay for environment harm and invitation them to reduce their emissions. Promoting electrical vehicles. China in investing on electric vehicles with 1.3 million new energy vehicles which are sold in 2022 nearly 11% increase from compared to previous year. Increasing environment cooperation. China is cooperating with other countries on environment issues including climate change and has participated in global climatic change talks and agreements. China only recently started actively helping to formulate global response to climate change. For decades, China resisted making commitments under UN framework. China shouldn't have to sacrifice its economy development for environment protection that the developed countries such as United Nations should carry more burden because they are able to grow their economies without their limitations. As climate change and environmental degradation became top priority for the Chinese government, it participated more in global climatic talks, eventually becoming a leader on climatic change. In 2016, China has announced its participation with Paris Agreement and in the year since, it has ramped up its commitment. China has been open to work with other countries, environment ministers from Japan and South Korea whose governments have expressed our concern about smog and acid rains that crosses countries with borders from China, have held yearly meetings with Chinese counterparts. The world's largest third emitter has signed climatic change with China or neighboring country but high tension in 2021 raised about our future collaboration. In conclusion, 
I would like to urge all the global community not to hamper the PRC path, which makes the positivity contribution to climate as well as the economy across the globe. Thank you.
General of United Nations, Dr. Sunita Vora, Heads of the States, Governments, Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, it is an honor to be a part of this assembly together with the representatives of Soviet nations. I have the point of time when the world needs truth and hope to face these challenges. Our country Brazil is one of the largest countries in the world and has a forest cover of 57% of land area. The Amazon is immensely rich and considered as the lungs of the planet. Our population is just 2.7% of the world population. Our Amazon house world's greatest biodiversity with 10% of all plants and animals in the world. Also, also our American forest contributes 20% of total oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere. We are the leaders when it comes to the conservation of tropical rainforest. Even while preserving 66% of native vegetation, we use only 27% of territory for the agriculture and animal husbandry. Even so, we are the victims of most brutal information campaign around the world about Amazons and Brit uh, Brazilian wetlands. Our GDP is 1.92 lakh crore US dollars and is growing with a rate of 2.9% annually. Even as one of the world's 10th largest economies, we account for only 3% of carbon emissions. <coughs> but like all other countries, Brazil is also experiencing a rapid climate change the, and impact with spatially varied. By the end of the century, depending on the trajectory of the global GGH emissions, the average temperature in the Brazil is expected to rise 1.7 degrees Celsius to 5.3 degrees Celsius. In the energy sector, the proposed actions to increase the share of sustainable biofuels about 18% share renewable energies beyond hydropower by 45% by 2050. In agriculture, the proposed actions are strengthening the low carbon agriculture program, restoring additional 15 million hectares of degraded pasture land by 2030. Our concern of for the environment goes beyond the forest. Brazil's nation, National Marine Debris Program, one of the very initiatives of this kind, has designed as a strategy for coastline which spanned over 8,500 kilometers. We are open to the world to offer our very best and Brazil's new policy simultaneously pursuing closer relations. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity.
Japan gone. Our country population is equivalent to 1.53% of total world population. It has undergone significant industrialization. We have experienced the rapid economic growth since 2021. So our country is signatory to Paris Agreement and has committed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions 80 percent by 2050. As a part of it, we observed 2.3 percent decrease on CO2 production compared to the year 2021 and 22.9 percent decrease compared to the year 2030. As per disaster management, heavy rainfall is primary cause of floods in our country. Rising temperatures, change in weather patterns, increases the risk of extreme weather events. To decrease the risk of natural disasters, climate change adaptation act is enacted in 2018 to promote adaptation measures such as heat stroke prevention, ecosystem conservation and flood control measures like seawalls, dams, flood control channels, early warning systems and erosion control measures. However, more needs to be done to address the growing threat of flooding in our country. We are actively promoting renewable energy resources. So, energy mix is becoming increasingly important as the government tries to shift away from fossil fuels to low carbon sources of energy. We have made progress in increasing renewable energy consumption with a growth rate of 18% per annum from 2001 to 2020. There is a long way to achieve country's renewable energy targets as we have limited domestic energy resources and it requires significant investment in infrastructure. To promote renewable energy, we have implemented FID scheme, green growth strategies, energy mix targets for 2030 and also encourages the adoption of electric vehicles with a goal of 50% new cars as being electric by 2030. We have been practicing sustainable land use practices like Satyoma, green infrastructure and land use planning setting up goals for climate change mitigation and disaster risk reduction. Our country actively engages in global efforts to address climatic change with the help of our neighboring countries. We participated in global climate change negotiations and agreements in the United Nations framework convention. We are thankful for various countries and international organizations for their support during our pandemics. By expressing our gratitude, we aim to strengthen our relationship and cooperation with various countries, promoting mutual understanding and collaboration. Thank you. Namaste, Honorable Secretary General of the Assembly. I am honored to address the union. UN General Assembly today on behalf of Government of India. India is the seventh largest country. The current population of India is nearly 1 billion. We stand fifth place in GDP with 3.937 billion dollars. Our economy is one of the fastest growing in the world with sectors like information technology, pharmaceuticals and agriculture playing a significant role. Our country is the world's second largest contributor to United Nations peacekeeping operations and it is nuclear arms state with one of the largest militaries in the world. However, government involvement has been gradually reduced as private investment has grown. We are the third largest CO2 emitter with 2 million metric tons of total CO2 emissions produced in 2022. Coal is the main energy source of our country. The climatic changes of our country include erratic monsoons, rising temperatures, impact on agriculture, etc. Some strategies involve climatic changes of our country include renewable energy promotion, deforestation and reforestation, energy efficiency measures, etc. Most of the, most of the countries India follows greenhouse gases. We focus on reducing greenhouse gas emission, promoting renewable energy sources and implementing climate resilient strategies. We are active on adaptation and mitigation strategies to address these challenges and and good climatic changes. NICRA is, NICRA is the network of India Council of Agriculture Research launched in February 2011. The project was formally 
launched by Honorable Union Minister of Agriculture and Food Processing Industries. Our government planned to install around 5,000 compressed biogas plants across the country by 2023 by using feedstock. We, ha we have largest hydropower reserves, but now we are focusing on small hydropower as compared to the large large hydropower as for as former is more environmental friendly. Thank you. Blessings and greetings be upon you in the name of the God, the creator of Omnipotent. Our country Iran believes that justice brings unity, the terms brings cohesion. Warfare is a destroyer of all things. We gather here today at the critical point in our shared global effect on the confront clim climatic change. Iran stands at fourth position in the oil production and stands in the second, second position in the national gas production. Our country will experience in 2.6 degree centigrade increase in mean temperature and 35% decline in precipitation in the next decades. Iran by totally greenhouse gas emissions nearly to 6,16,741 million tons of CO2 is the first responsible country to clim climatic change in the Middle East. According to the 130 year record, the warmest year have occurred since 2000. The year 2016 revealed as the warmest record on data. Cumulative CO2 emissions have been estimated as 20-40 centigrade in next 15, 15 to 20 years and 4 degree by end of the century. Our country will experience increase in 2.6 degree centigrade in mean temperature and 35 degree percent decline in precipitation. According to the tables, the total CO2 equivalent emission has increased by 2.3 percent previous year. Our government is serious because we adopted a low carbon economy last year in the government and we started working in that direction and we also implemented our international uh, national in greenhouse emissions by 12%, 34% unconditional and 8% conditional. To total of lifting the sanctions against us and we also started implementing that in different areas involving, involving solar energy, wind energy, Increasing energy efficiency in industries, power plants to mitigate greenhouse gases. 10.4% of our GDP is spent on the energy subsidies. I conclude that the national strategies on climatic change in our country should be focused on mitigation of greenhouse gas emissions in energy sector. For this purpose, energy organization of our country have developed applications of renewable energy such as solar panels, 10 gigawatts renewable energy by the capacity by the year 2025. In this regard, fusion research and the develop should be considered as the novel methods to explore renewable energy application and to mitigate greenhouse gases in order to overcome the increasing risk of climatic change effects. We have long episodes of drought, less rainfall, high temperatures, so we are working to adopt our agriculture to our cities, urban residents in the face of climate change. In addition, we are also working in the terms of our industrial infrastructure to be able to face the climate change. Our largest step is to restore Lake Rumia, which is the world's largest salt water lake. We will stand to the zero emission policy by the year 2050. I thank you all sincerely for, for, for this kind attention. May the blessings of omnipotent be on you. General, Your Excellence and Honorable Members of the UN, I am honored to stand before you today as a representative of the Kingdom Saudi Arabia. We gathered at a time of great challenge, our world facing conflict of climate change. Our Kingdom is committed to work with as nations to address these challenges. Since 1800s, human activities have been the main driver of the climate change due to burning of fossil fuels which generates greenhouse emissions. People are experiencing climate change in diverse ways, affecting health, ability to grow food, housing and safety. Some countries are vulnerable to climatic impacts. Conditions like sea level rise and salt water intrusion have advanced to the point where whole communities have had to relocate and protracted droughts are putting people at a risk of famine. Our kingdom Saudi Arabia is vulnerable to global climatic changes by affecting log droughts, rising temperature, water scarcity, sea level rise, 
dust and sandstorms, agricultural impacts, health impacts and energy demand. Our kingdom stands in 67th place in this year's CCPI, making the lowest ranking of all those surveyed. Carbon dioxide emissions per capita in our kingdom are equivalent to 15.47 tons per person according to 2016. Royal Highness Aid Grown Prince and Prime Minister announced that our, our kingdom plans to achieve net zero emission by 2030 through circular carbon and economy approach. This will contribute significantly to achieve global climate targets while protecting international energy security. In 2016, our kingdom launched Saudi 2030 program to reduce its dependency on oil and diversify its economic resources and promote sustainability. Our kingdom taking a multi-dimensional approach to emissions reduction and committed to have 50% of its power generated from renewable energy sources by 2030. Usually, our kingdom's carbon dioxide emission is 680 million metric tons per annum. SGI targets to reduce carbon emissions by 278 million tons per annum by 2030. A mission to accelerate our kingdom's green energy transition and migrate the impacts of climate change. Time is up. We must act now. By working all together, let's bring change to the world and save future for our successors and descendants. Thank you. Today, 
I bring with me the urgency and determination of a nation that refuses to be defined by adversity alone. The Republic of Fiji today stands at the crossroads where the imperatives of climate action intersect with our steadfast commitment and equitable development and environmental stewardship. In Fiji, we witness the rising seas encroaching upon our shells daily, coastal erosion, saltwater intrusion, threatens our homes, our livelihoods, and our way of life. Entire communities have already been forced to relocate when their ancestral lands submerge beneath the relentless waves. Imagine a world where the relentless march of climate change threatens not just our ecosystem but the very fabric of our own existence, existence of societies, existence of economies. This is a reality faced by the Fiji today. Climate change knows no borders, respects no sovereignty. It's a threat to our planet, and Fiji is of no exception. The COVID-19 pandemic completed the impacts of recent natural disaster and worsened the burden of all sectors in the Fijian economy. We are experiencing a significant economic downturn as agriculture is the backbone of our country. Our economy is now on the recovery path with tourism too on a declining path. Yet, amid these challenges, Fiji remains resolute in its commitment to sustainable development. We have implemented robust policies to mitigate emissions, protect our resources and strengthen our resilience to climate impacts. However, our actions alone are insufficient in the face of this global crisis. We call upon the international community to honor its commitment on the Paris Agreement and scale up support for climate adaptation and mitigation efforts in developing countries. There must be a change in the way of life without forming that new human who seeks change. It is very difficult to confront the climate issue. Now, we Tikoni, Avena, Baby Kaboti. Support is a foundation of trust. In closing, let us remember the fight against climate change is a fight for our future. It is a fight for our children, our economies and our planet. This is a fight for a greater good coming tomorrow. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Secretary General, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, greetings to all from the Republic of Maldives. Maldives appreciates the opportunity of addressing this esteemed assembly on climate change. Maldives is small, both in terms of population and land areas. Despite of its size, our country is renowned for its beautiful landscapes. Tourism is the largest contributor of our economy and it is accounting for a significant portion of our GDP and foreign exchange earnings. We have experienced a significant development over the years, primarily driven through tourism and fisheries. Some key aspects in the development include economic diversification, infrastructure, political stability and social development. So we have achieved impressive development in certain sectors. We are also facing some unique challenges related to our geography and economic dependence which shape its ongoing developmental trajectory. Today, there is much in the world that is wrong. Climate change has a profound impact on our country, primarily due to the low geography and vulnerability to the rise in the sea level. We are already impacted by the coastal erosions, saltwater intrusions, biodiversity loss, economical loss, and extreme weather events. By 2050, 80% of our nation will become uninhabited due to the rise in sea level. We are not prepared to die. The Maldives has no intention of dying. We are not going to become the first victim of the climate crisis. Instead, we are going to do everything in our power to keep our heads above the water. United Nations. This was formed from the ashes of two devastating world wars, which has killed more than 100 million people. And now, today, we need these United Nations because the problems of our times are extraordinary and none of us alone can resolve them. We found amusing how these developed nations are speaking today about the rise in temperature and about the rise in the sea level where we stood on this point long years back ago, back in the 2009 by signing a document under the water to raise the attention towards the severity of climate change and this was presented in the Denmark at Copenhagen Climate Change Conference. In conclusion, we stand at a critical juncture in the phase of 
escalating climate impacts. We urgently need your support to mitigate greenhouse gas emissions and safeguard our nation's future. I thank you for your attention and I urge you, each of you, to join hands with us in the global effort together. And together we can make a profound difference in addressing this climate change and ensure a sustainable future for all of us. Thank you. Imagine your world where sea levels rise, extreme weather events intensify and ecosystems struggle to adapt. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable members of the UN Assembly, I stand before you today, today as an expert in climate science to share your stark reality. UN Assembly. So our world is facing an unprecedented crisis. Climatic changes are a no longer threat, a distant threat, but a harsh reality that demands immediate attention and collective action. The rise of the greenhouse gases in the post-war era in human activities like burning fossil fuels, deforestation and industrial agriculture lead to a steady increase in greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide levels rose from 280 parts per million to 340 parts per million. The warning signs as temperature rose, we started seeing warning signs, more frequent heat waves and droughts, melting of Arctic ice caps, increase in extreme weather events. The tipping point temperatures have risen 1 degree Celsius since pre-industrial times. Sea levels have risen by 15 to 20 centimeters, polar ice caps melting at an unprecedented rate, and polar bleaches, ocean acidification, and marine life collapse, water scarcity, food insecurity, and human migration. So the economic impacts, the global economic losses due to the climate-related disasters, $320 billion in 2018 and $150 billion in 2019 and $120 billion in 2020 and the projected annual economic losses by 2050 is $1.5 billion. Losses in global GDP by 2 to 10 percent. So the environmental impacts increase in the global temperature to 1.1 degrees Celsius to 2 degrees Celsius and increase in the weather events 15 percent and the sea levels raise in 15 to 20 centimeters. So the health impacts increase in the heart-related deaths and rise in vector borne diseases to 10% and the mental health impacts 10 to 20% increase in the anxiety and depression. Social impacts increase in the global refuges, rise in the food security and loss of cultural heritage sites 10 to 30% by 2050. The loss of biodiversity 1 million species at risk of extinction and the water scarcity and increase in the 50% since 1990 and decrease in the air quality, 10 to 20 percent increase in the respiratory diseases. And the mitigation strategies, transition to the renewable energy, shift from fossil fuels to solar, and wind and other renewable energy to reduce greenhouse gases. Energy efficiency, carbon capture and storage sustainable use of land. Electrify transportation, promote electric vehicles and public transport to decrease dependence on the fossil fuels. Waste reduction management, climate resilient infrastructure, sustainable water management and ecosystem restoration and climate negotiation and education and awareness. So the nullification strategies, carbon mineralization, develop technologies to convert, car convert carbon into stable minerals and advance in nuclear power, large scale carbon removal and geoengineering. Research and develop geoengineering to reflect sunlight and modify clouds. Global cooperation and governance. International agreements such as Paris Agreement, Global Climate Cooperation, Climate Governance and Climate Finance. At last, the decisions we make today will determine the world we make we leave for future generations. Together through bold action and unwavering commitment, we have the power to safeguard our planet and ensure a sustainable future for all. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed delegates and honored guests, we gather today at a critical juncture in the history of our planet. Climate change poses an existential threat to our world, ravaging ecosystems, displacing communities and imperiling the very foundations of our existence. Island nations and developing countries such as Maldives, Fiji and Cuba have contributed least to the global green gas emissions but are bearing the burnt of erratic and extreme weather events such as floods, 
droughts, extreme heat and cold, and are about to vanish from the earth in coming days. The alarming report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change scientists says that a global rise in temperatures by one degree will happen in the next decade, no matter what efforts are undertaken. So we need to limit the this global warming to at least 1.5 degrees Celsius and make sure that the greenhouse gas emissions must be made nearly half by 2030. Now, the push for the resolution was driven by the small island countries like Maldives and Fiji and other supporting countries together by requesting support from China and United States, the two biggest greenhouse gas emitting countries, not to raise objections. In response to this global emergency, we, the UN Assembly, hereby present this resolution calling upon all nations and stakeholders to take the immediate, collective and sustained action to mitigate the effects of climate change and transition towards a more sustainable, equitable and resilient future. This resolution recognizes the urgent need for every country would double the use of renewable energies by 2030. Countries with forest area above 30% would enhance forest cover to 30% by 2030, while the developed countries without land would fund reforestation programs in the developing countries. Reduction of 20% carbon footprint of all agricultural products by 2030. Introduction of climate change as a core subject from school level. <coughs> Set up international fund for promotion of wind power and solar power in developing countries. Let us unite in our pursuit of a livable world and let this resolution serve as a beacon of hope and a call to action for a climate resilient future. Today, we will send this message loud and clear not only around the world but far into the future that in this very day, the people of United Nations acted through their governments, decided to leave aside the differences and work together to tackle the defining challenges of our life, the climate change. I urge all the participants to support this resolution. So these are the major measures and consensus to be taken in the next 10 years. Thank you everyone.